Hello everyone, my name is Stephanie Vira and I am in charge of the Marketing and Communications Department at Shriners Hospitals for Children. It brings me great joy to be here today to tell you a little bit more about our organization. Shriners Children's um, is changing the lives of children every day. We take care of kids that have different orthopedic conditions, uh, burns, spinal cord injuries, and cleft lip and palate. And we see these kids all the way through age 18. We were founded by Shriners International. And as many of you know, you need to be a Mason in order to be a Shriner. And so members of the Shriners fraternity support our hospital and it, we wouldn't be able to do many things without. We're so thankful that Shriners International founded our organization based on the Masonic principles of brotherly love, truth and founded Shriners Hospitals for Children in 1922. So our system as a whole just recently celebrated 100 years. The Philadelphia Hospital actually opened in 1926 on the Roosevelt Boulevard in the Northeast section of Philadelphia. In 1998, we moved to North Broad Street. So I am here today giving this presentation at One North Broad and our building is located at 3500 North Broad Street. So not too far up the street, but it's a great place. Um, so here's a, a picture of our current location. Um, we are on the health campus of Temple University Hospital. We're located right across the street from Temple Temple's Med School. Um, we have some amazing staff at our hospital. I'm going to talk about it a little bit more in our presentation. Our staff is nationally and internationally known throughout the country, throughout international countries. Um, they recently just returned from a trip to Cyprus to provide care to patients. Um, we have people that come to us both locally and from a great distance. Um, we provide care to kids that have many routine and complex orthopedic conditions. Some of the things that we treat, just think anything with the body and the bones is what we provide care for. We have a huge spinal cord injury rehabilitation program that started in the 1980s. We provide care to kids that have scoliosis. So you might remember getting your spine checked when you were in elementary school. We provide care now for kids that have cleft lip and palate, broken bones. We have complex birth injuries from a brachial plexus injury, arthrogryposis, when your limbs are twisted in and they might not extend all the way out, hip dysplasia, people that are born missing limbs, limb differences, sports injuries, ACLs, MCL injuries, cerebral palsy, and more. One of the things that makes us unique is within our building, we have three operating rooms. And so in those operating rooms, this is a behind the scenes look right here. Um, we have surgery operating three times, uh, I'm sorry, in three rooms every day of the week. So Monday through Friday, the operating rooms are buzzing. Some of these surgeries, this is a spine surgery that's being performed. Some of these surgeries are eight to 12 hours long. And I don't know about you, but I know that would be a long time to be on your feet. Um, and so our surgeons do it with grace and they really make a difference. You know, many times our spine patients will come out and say, I grew three inches um, on the operating room table because their spine is now straight. Um, we are so proud that within our operating rooms, we um, have a great nursing staff that help really carry the care. We have students that come through. It's, it's really, it makes us who we are. One of the other things, um, people often think that at Shriners, we only take care of kids that have extreme different needs, but believe it or not, one of the things that keeps us going every day, Monday through Friday, we have a walk-in fracture clinic. So over the weekend, if your child or your neighbor or you know someone that happens to fall off you know, the monkey bars at the playground or they happen to um, bend their thumb the wrong way and you take them 
them to an urgent care or the emergency room and they say, okay, follow up with your orthopedist. You're like, well, my kid is seven and we don't have an orthopedist. So you can just come on in. You walk in and you head up to our fourth floor and you're seen. Um, that's Dr. Ben right there. He's one of our great uh, fellows who's an upper extremity guy. And um, this kiddo sitting right there, he was on the playground playing basketball and his thumb and a couple of his fingers just went the wrong way. One of the other things that we have opened and expanded upon is that we're actually now in Doylestown as well. So we are on the health campus of um, in the pavilion at Doylestown Hospital. And so we also have a walk-in clinic available there Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 3.30. Again, those broken bones, we're ready to help and get them on. One of our little mottos that we say often is that um, you know, kids have little bones and they need to be seen by a specialist who knows what they're doing with that. So please, if anybody knows anybody who has a broken bone, we're happy to fix it. Part of our um, care that we also provide is a rehab. And so you, we have physical therapists, we have occupational therapists, speech therapists, recreation therapy, and they're a key part of our team. If they weren't there, then our kids wouldn't be able to get in and get out and get rehabbed and back to their home and their environment. Um, and so, um, Robbie's right there in the right hand picture with Mallory. They're, they're practicing some things like putting your shoes on. Um, he, he traveled a great distance to come to us for care. And um, we're just really pleased that we can provide it. Courtney below is working with one of the sports injury kids, um, one of the ballerinas. She had an injury. She's come to us for rehab to get back out on the dance floor. One of the other great things that we do is we provide um, someone, his name is Rob. He's our wheelchair and seating specialist. And he makes the impossible possible with happening with wheelchairs. If somebody says, you know, I, wore, I live in the city and I have curb cutouts that are terrible and the cracks in the sidewalks, he finds the right tires for that person. Because remember, someone who uses a wheelchair, those are their legs. And so they need to be able to have the right wheelchair that they need. We take different parts to, to swap them out and make it work. Um, and it's really great for our kids um, to be able to get around. One of the other awesome things in our building is the Motion Analysis Center, and you're, you might be unsure what that is. Well, it's a um, motion capture camera system that we're able to track the movements of the children that we see as they walk, reach, bend, twist, um, using our technology. The physicians and the therapists come together to, to determine if someone needs surgery, determine if they need an orthotic, a brace. Um, there's a wide range. So what we see with our eye is, you know, a, a human being walking down a, a piece of uh, gray flooring, but in that flooring, there's these um, certain spots that you step on. And when you step on them, you can see in the di the diagram there with the kids on the two and the three, they can really feel the pressure and see where they're putting it um, with their feet. And of course, um, you know, many people used to call it the gate lab. And that was because you were walking and looking at people's gates, but the motion analysis center has really expanded and we do lots of work with the arms. Now we do lots of things with bending for kids that have scoliosis. So it's no longer just you're walking in your gait. We've expanded upon, um, and so within Shriners Children's, there are about 13 different labs in our system, and um, they come together to be able to figure out the best way to keep moving forward with providing the latest technology to kids um, and the physicians, because gone are the days of saying, you know, walk down the hall, let's see how you walk. Um, they can actually put markers and see it through the cameras. Um, it's always one of my favorite rooms. And um, the other photo up on the screen is actually um, one of the kids is playing a game afterwards. So he there is an astronaut in the photo. So um, in addition to being in there, the motion labs, um, you know, they can take a little while, about two hours, two to four hours to get the results. And so they like to add some fun and have some green screens to take photos and really make people feel enjoyable after they're finished. 
part of our care includes inpatient care. So we have kids that stay with us. Some kids are here for one night and they're heading home. We have other kids that might stay for a little longer. Maybe they are in halo traction like Allie is right there. So it may look a little scary that she's got screws and um, whatnot coming out of her head, but believe it or not, um, halo traction will really help stretch the spine before they can go in and finish doing the second phase of the surgery. And so with that, our kids get to do lots of different fun things like um, art, and um, it's really a great thing for our, our patients to be able to fill their days with different things. We also have inpatient rehab. So if you have a new injury or you are learning how to you know, ambulate differently, we have the ability to have you be an inpatient and get a lot more time for your therapy. Um, Another special thing, you know, we, we often have high schoolers that will come in and college kids, not so much since COVID's happened, but previously. And I'd always love to talk about our orthotics and prosthetic services because I don't think it gets enough um, play. And I don't think enough people know that there is a career out there to help someone have legs and make prosthetic devices and make orthotics that are the braces that help kids. Um, and it's pretty fascinating. And so, um, um, we can do many different things. Um, the orthotics is the braces, like I said, and then the prosthetics are the artificial limbs. And so we really try to meet the kids' lifestyles. Um, Zion right there, he's getting running blades because, you know, he wants to be able to keep up with his buddies and play sports. Um, and so it's a great thing that we can have to offer. We're always so grateful to see kids as they keep growing and that's, you know, a natural thing. And so um, we're able to continue to make larger size braces um, for kids as they grow. And same with prosthetics, you know, if you want to be able to play the violin now or you want to be able to hold a lacrosse stick, um, our services are able to help kids be kids and, and have what they need. So in the most recent time, um, you know, we looked within our Delaware Valley, we looked in the greater Philadelphia area and we said, you know what, there is a need for kids that have cleft lip and palate and um, it's in the Shriners mission to be able to do that. And so we launched a service line to help kids with cleft cleft lip and palate. Um, that is Liam, Liam before and Liam after. He's a cutie and we're here to help. And so um, it's a scary time for women when and, and families and parents when they are going to be told that their child will have a cleft lip and palate, but we're here to help. So we're wanting more kids to know about it and more families. Um, and so it's a service that we're able to now provide as well. We have a huge medical staff and within that we have a couple new faces. And so Dr. Um, Park is on the far left. Um, he is new, he recently finished all of his medical school training. And so we're happy to have him. He is an upper extremity specialist and he has also um, done a fellowship in plastics. So he will be helping out in addition to um, the others with our cleft lip and palate team. Dr. Ishmael in the middle, he joined us um, last summer. And the great thing, um, Dr. Ishmael actually did his training at Shriners. And so we were so excited to have him back and join us formally and full-time on staff. Dr. Sean Waldron ends out the new uh, members of the team. He had been in practice for about 10 years previously in Louisiana, and he grew up around here in the greater Delaware Valley, and so he wanted to come back home, and so it's been great having him. He focuses on sports medicine and cerebral palsy, and so Dr. Waldron, Dr. Ishmael, and Dr. Park are great members of our team, and they are excited to see patients and meet, meet new faces. Part of our trifold mission is research. So on top of education that I've already mentioned about, we also have research. So across the street earlier in my talk, I mentioned that we have, um, we're on the Temple's Health Science Campus. In the medical school, we have um, a whole research team and that, that's some of the team right there. Um, and we are doing research on spinal cord injuries, cerebral palsy, nerve injuries. And then um, they come together with our clinical research team. So 
within our building, we have a research team that is meeting with some of the patients that I've mentioned to ask them if they would like to be in these studies to be able to go ahead and help take from the bench side to the bedside and really get new research out into other people's hands. I wanted to go ahead and talk about some of the kids that we help. And, you know, our, our hospital sees 16,000 or so kids a year. And so here's some of the kids that we see. So Cammie's over there um, working on how to brush her teeth. So Sarah, my coworker, is an occupational therapist. And it's very important for kids to be able to do ADLs or activities of daily living and to be able to go ahead and figure out simple things like brushing your teeth and, you know, getting dressed in the morning, brushing your hair. I also want to talk about Allie. Allie came in just the other day and we were talking about why we love Shriners. And so she was telling us because when she's at Shriners, she's not different and she sees other kids like her. And, you know, it really makes a difference for kids to be able to see kids like them. She's missing part of her arm. And, you know, it's it's hard to be a teen sometimes. And so coming to Shriners makes her feel happy because she sees other kids that look like her. Jesse. Jesse was uh, playing around with his friends. He was um, lucky. Um, he was in a swimming pool. He dove in the shallow end and um, he broke his neck. And so he did not know what was to come in those days ahead. Um, and 60 days after coming to Shriners for rehab, he walked out of our building. And so we are able to provide rehab to kids um, who might not see, see it in the moment, but Jesse's doing a great job today. Jesse's out and about walking and just getting stronger every day. And so he's one of our proud patient ambassadors who walks around and talks to people now about his experience about diving in shallow water. Um, you just never know, and we're here to help at Triders. <laughs> This is a picture of Allie, who I showed earlier in my presentation when she had her halo traction on. Um, she has what is called idiopathic scoliosis. And so there is no reason for why she has scoliosis. And she's also had it since she was a wee one. So she has had many braces over the years. And um, I always enjoy sharing pictures like this because it really shows the difference over the years. So many people help us in many different ways. We have um, many people that bring us money, they bring us checks, they bring us Ziploc bags full of change. Um, but this crew here, Aaron and his family, brought us tabs. So, you, you know, everybody calls it something different, a pop top, a soda tab, a beer tab, you know. Um, and so his family has collected them for us every year since he was little. And they love bringing them. And they're standing there with Dr. Cozen, his phone, you know, his physician, and, and they're just proud to, to pass them over. And it's just a way of saying thank you. And thank you for everything that you do. Um, and so every year we get more and more tabs. We're up to about $80,000 in soda tabs. And so the Raja Shriners actually brought the idea to us um, who are out in Reading, Pennsylvania. And it's just grown over the years since about 2002. I want to mention about Shriners. So we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for the Shriners. Um, the Shriners founded Shriners Hospitals for Children. The Shriners are very much uh, important stakeholders in our organization. Our photographer the other day was walking through the cafeteria and he saw a bunch of Shriners stacking their fezes. And so he luckily had his camera on his shoulder. And so I just want to shout out Kismet. They're from Long Island. Jaff is from Altoona. Of Pennsylvania. Iram is from up in the Wilkes-Barre Scranton area. Zembo's out in Harrisburg. And then I also want to mention the baseball hat that the one Shriner had on is from Sudan Shriners, and they are located all the way in North Carolina. And so this group of men, they collectively all got up early, left their house, picked up another family, and brought them to our hospital for care. And they all came together and had some camaraderie and, and laughed and just enjoyed each other's company while they were sharing a meal, waiting for the family that they were bringing. And so oftentimes, people say, do I 
need to know a Shriner to be able to come to Shriners, and that's not the case. It was years and years and years and years and years ago, but that's not how it is. But it is always nice when the Shriners are very active and part of our organization. So how can you support us? As I was mentioning, anybody can refer a patient, anybody can call our number and come in and be seen as long as it's within our scope of what we provide. We ask if you want to host a fundraiser. Um, we are a nonprofit organization that does rely on donations from organizations to support us. We have an endowment fund that supports us, but we've been around for 100 years and we want to be around for another 100. People hold toy drives for us or a teen rec drive. People think Shriners Children's and they always think about the cute little one, young ones. But often we think, you know, I mentioned about Jesse, he dove in a pool and, and broke his neck. But, you know, we have teenagers too. And so it's always great to remember our teenagers. We appreciate when people participate in service projects. You know, maybe it's a waiting room fun bag or, you know, you make a make something for our, our kids. And um, we, we just thank everybody who makes a donation, whether it's a, you know, 25 cents all the way up to 25,000 and more. We have donations of all sizes, people from all over that make donations to us. And we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for people that make donations. I also want to mention since 2015, we have hosted a Walk for Love. And we started it at the Lulu Shriners. And in 2020, Believe it or not, we moved it to the zoo, even being in a pandemic, and um, we're going to be there again um, the first October, I'm sorry, the um, October 7th this year of 2023. It is a great time. We kick off um, with a 5K around the zoo, and then we also have a one-mile walk, and then we have a nice program on the lawn at the Philadelphia Zoo. It's a great time. I welcome you all to come. It's very affordable. And we've raised all, over a million dollars since 2015. And so we enjoy it. There's people that travel a great distance to be there. And uh, even despite the rain, we still have a successful event. So please join us. I just want to end my presentation here with letting you know that we are located on 35, we are located at 3551 North Broad Street. Our phone number is easy to reach us at 215-430-4000, and we'll connect you with where you're going. Visit our website at shrinersphilly.org, and then you can find us on all social platforms at Shriners Philly. And that's a place to follow along with us, see what's going on, and it's really the great way to keep up with us, seeing photos and hearing stories. It really makes you feel the love of Shriners Children's. So with that, thank you very much for having me today. And if there aren't any questions, I appreciate your time and energy and listening to me. Thank you very much.